Figure Force is the codename of four daring, middle-aged, highly obsessed toy vloggers. Its purpose, to bring toy reviews and nostalgia to YouTube and Instagram. Video sharing websites that allow users to upload, view, share and comment. Hi, I'm Rudy Sassou and get ready for mystery, suspense and intrigue. The early 90s was one hell of a couple of years when it comes to cartoons and the cinema. There was this real renaissance for the 1930s, you know, taking elements of aviation and, you know, film noir and especially kind of that, that golden age. And it was just this influx of 1930s superheroes and that kind of Pulp Fiction storytelling. You had the likes of The Phantom, The Shadow, you know, even sort of Darkwing Duck was taking, you know, inspiration from the 1930s. You know, the just the signature look, even actually Batman the Animated Series, you know, although not set in any sort of time period, it just had that little flash of, you know, Art Deco and Zeppelins and all these kind of interesting bespoke pieces and as I said the same thing goes for the cinema and there was one film in particular that really just jumps out of the 1930s and that is The Rocketeer. The Rocketeer is one of my all-time favourite movies from the look, the aesthetic, to the plot, the actors and actresses and the superhero that is the Rocketeer, it really does have a hell of a lot of family entertainment. And for someone who was, you know, 13, 14 at the time, it was a really great film to see, and I love it to this date. So much so that I have been desperate to get a toy representation. Obviously, way back when, there just wasn't action figures or toys for those films. Considering it was a Disney film, Disney film didn't really often make action figures of, of their properties when it came to, you know, to the Hollywood big screen. And it, it's understandable why, you know, you, you just wouldn't get that many bits from it. But the last few years, there has been a few. There's been, I think, a, a Funko reflection version and finally a big six inch rocketeer action figure from diamond select i've had a couple of diamond select figures before i've had uh battle of the planets princess and the real ghostbusters egon is diamond select and you know even that battle of the planets one is from 2001 2002 and it's still a stunning figure but modern day Diamond Select, as I said, I just, I cannot fault them. So I am super excited to free this from the plastic prison and have a, a representation of Cliff Seacord. But let's have a look at the box first. It is a huge box. It's massive. If you're a mint and seal box kind of displayer it's a great piece to have just because the clamshell is so big and you get to see pretty much everything that it comes with and again done in the art deco style along with that sort of typeface that comes from the 1930s and as you can see there's the action figure a helmet an extra piece to his chest with a flat down blueprints to the actual rocket pack extra hands, extra gloved hands, action pieces for the bike, and it has a stand which is kind of translucent plastic. The anticipation of me opening this is driving me 
nuts. But even before we get then, let's have a look at the back. It's an integral part of the toy experience for sure, looking at the back of a box. And it doesn't disappoint. You get to see the action figure and it's four pose on the stand. You get a close up of the rocket pack with the blast effects. And you get to see the face sculpt and the helmet. I can tell you now though, obviously Diamond Select and Disney do not hold the rights to have the actor's face. So it's quite a generic face. But then again, you know, in some ways, the Rocketeer, it's still a comic booky pulp character. So it doesn't desperately need to look like Bill Campbell for me. And then the description on the back of the synopsis kind of, of who the Rocketeer is. It's some of the best written bits that I've seen on an action figure for sure. The discovery of a top secret jetpack hurls test pilot Cliff Secord into a daring adventure of mystery, suspense and intrigue. Cliff encounters an assortment of ruthless villains led by a Hollywood screen actor who's a secret spy. With the help of his actress girlfriend, the young pilot battles enormous odds to defeat his foes, who are anxious to use the device in an evil plan to rule the world. That just is the Rocketeer, and it just sounds like, a, as I said, a real Pulp Fiction comic storybook. And there's enough of kind of the movie look to it, as well as, you know, you can imagine it being a comic, you know, in the vein of the Rocket Ranger, you know, a, an old Amiga game that was was about. It just looks absolutely stunning, and it it's filling me full of nostalgia, just for you know that early nineties. And I, I, let's open it. Figure Force will return after these messages. We now return to Figure Force. So here is the Rocketeer Cliff Secord, free of the plastic prison. This is him stock, straight out the box. This is how he comes packaged. Obviously, it's when all the accessories and the posability really makes the action figure come alive. But whilst it's in stock, it does allow us to have a proper look at some of the details from the figure and with 16 points of articulation there's so many poses that you can do with this action figure which I'll show you in a little moment. Firstly the face sculpt as I said in the box it's pretty generic but it's it's well done it, it looks like a human face but a bit nondescript it's that that's for me that's the the only downside to the action figure is that it doesn't completely look like the actor. But you know, you're never going to get a toy or an action figure that that perfect. And to be honest, I'm not going to display it with his face. And then the leather detail is beautifully moulded in a little brass indents. Onto the jetpack itself, the rocket. It's done in a wonderful grey sheen with little brass bits for the turbines, and it even has the bit of chewing gum that covers the bullet hole, like in the movie. Again, just wonderfully moulded detail on his jodhpurs, the type of aviation gear that they had in the 30s. Even though it's not leather, it really has just a wonderful leather look to the action figure. And in terms of the 16 points of articulation, as I said, it's pretty much a standard affair for modern day action figures, the likes of Diamond Select and NECA. 
ankle tilts, rockers, knee bends, waist swivel, hands, elbows, shoulders. It's it's got all that straight out of the box. It's it's not too bad. But as I said, it's putting on the accessories that make this toy absolutely shine. A quick change of hands and a change to his leather front so the flap is folding down and the addition of his helmet allows him to give him the downtime, the just finished, you know, rescuing his actress girlfriend. It's a great little piece to have on the shelf just as, you know, there standing relaxing. The detail on the helmet though Again, it's, it's fantastic. It's got that brass look to it with the darkest black they could get onto that. And the moulded detail, it's, it really is like an Art Deco piece. And what Diamond Select always does well when it comes to action figures, it's when there is pointy parts and sharp parts, they do make it out of... The slightly rubbery plastic that's so malleable that it's not going to crack or chip off and break. It's a great piece to have, actually. I'm, I am tempted to display it like this, but there's so many more accessories that are just perfect for this, and that's the blast effects and the exhaust the big plumage. Let's have a look at that now. Another change of hands. It's incredible to have four sets of hands. It's just endless possibilities, but yeah, flight mode. So as you can see, the articulation allows you to give it the flying pose. An extra little the bends in the knees give you enough to give you even more action motion and obviously the blast effects. For people familiar with Earthrise and Siege, you're going to know these effects for Transformers and they are pretty much just as similar. Wonderful translucent plastic that really pick up the light and are graduated so well. And then the addition of the flat cover to his jacket. On a clear translucent flight stand, again, it's a, another great way to display this action figure. And the extra, kind of, there's enough head tilt to give it a stance that's suitable for flying. This figure is getting better and better the more that I mess around with it uh, it's stunning so far it's absolutely stunning but what's coming up next I think this is going to be by far the best way for me to display this action figure quickly before we get there a little look at the signature blueprint from the movie it's done on really thick card and the printing is impeccable. They are some of the cleanest CAD drawings I have seen. And it's just a great little addition to the set. They didn't have to put this in at all. But it's just, I love these little bits, extra little accessories that Diamond Select and NECA do. They, they do just add that extra bit of play value and display factor. And finally, now with the, the takeoff stance with the big exhaust plumage this thing this is how i'm going to display the rocketeer this is the rocketeer for me blasting off to go and save the day i'm giving it a little head tilt so it looks like it's first take off and it just the beauty of how well the stand is done it's so dynamic, so well painted. The translucency just works all the way through. It goes from orange to red, back to orange, and then 
orange with grey dry brushing all over. Dry brushing is a real, uh, you know, you've, you've got to be all in when it comes to dry brushing. So many, you know, toys do not get dry brushing correct. And for somebody who has painted Warhammer miniatures in the past, dry brushing is a real art form. And once you nail it, it's, it just brings a display piece to life. You know, this isn't just a display piece. I've had so much fun just getting to grips with it and seeing all the different poses. It just, it really is a wonderful representation of the Rocketeer, from what you can do, the different pose, like having it look like it's flying, having it stand, giving it its vertical takeoff. And with the stand, it it's now even bigger. Originally, when I like I first got it, I thought, oh, it's you know, it's a it's a good six inch figure. You know, it's comparable to Marvel Legends and those sorts of sorry, and, the, and the Black series, but looking at it and having it in hand it's a bit bigger it's definitely on the realms of a seven inch scale and then with the stand it it becomes much more of a bigger display piece to give an idea of the size comparison here we have steam robo or loco from the gobots the machine robo which is about six inches with the legs a bit more straighter than my pose it absolutely towers over a robot it's it's stunning it's awesome it's possibly one of you know the best action figures you know i've got this year actually it may be the only action figure i've had this year considering that we've been on lockdown for three and a half months and I was saving money and not buying toys at the start of the year. It's incredible, it oozes the 30s, it oozes that early 90s cinema and it captures the Rocketeer to a T. It's like he jumped off the screen or blasted off the screen. But what you might have noticed is I only showed three sets of hands Obviously I put the stock hands back on here. It actually comes with a closed fist and a gun hand. But obviously no gun. Being that it's officially licensed by Disney, as well as Diamond Select, Disney are not going to package a gun in their toys. Yeah, my Darkwing Duck is a Funko Disney affiliated toy which came with a gun but that gun does not kill people the gun the rocketeer has you know it's it's a killing it's a killing weapon and disney are just not going to do that i've had conversations with a couple of other toy collectors about this action figure in there there's two like two camps how half of us don't need the gun and others are just like it'd be the thing that makes it you know almost perfect but I don't need it to have a gun but there's definitely the possibility that you could put easily a uh, Marvel Legends Captain America kind of 1930s 40s Hydra gun and it would work fine I can always put my DC collectibles grey ghost gun because it's very 30s looking gun if you so desired to but I don't for me this is the perfect representation of the Rocketeer. Diamond Select, the Rocketeer. The global pandemic of COVID-19, the coronavirus, still continues, but now lockdown seems to be easing up and a lot of the restrictions are being lifted. So that means toy hunting can resume. I have now been unfurloughed and I am really looking forward to getting out there and going back out on toy hunts. So if you do find yourself out going on that toy hunt, obviously still adhere to the guidelines and stay safe and follow social distancing. But always know that if you do see two of something, 
Leave one for the next collector. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs>